this stuff. All right, it works. Perfect. All right, so my name's Hunter, and this is my senior project about the value of hippotherapy. I volunteered at a farm called Upreach, and their motto is changing lives with the power of the horse, and that's truly what they do. What they do is hippotherapy, and uh, hippotherapy comes from Greek hippos and the English therapy, and it literally translates to horse therapy. So during a typical hippotherapy lesson, there is a physical, occupational, or language therapist who will work with a patient who is on horseback. But there's also lessons with a non-horseback. They're sort of grooming the horse or doing whatever else with the horse to help them with whatever their issue is, whatever disability they have. But during the mounted lessons, there is the therapist, one horse leader who walks the horse and follows instructions from the therapist to perform different maneuvers. And then there's also one to two sidewalkers, which is what I was doing. Sidewalkers stand next to the patient and sort of hold them on the horse, having their leg, their arm over their thigh or holding their ankle. It's basically to prevent them from falling off the horse or even like sort of sliding off to the side as well. And if there's also upreach staff uh, on hand, so if anything horse related goes wrong, and if something horse related does go wrong, I would perform something called an emergency dismount. An emergency dismount, you sort of grab the patient by the waist and sort of spin off to get the patient off the horse as soon as you can and away from the horse. Usually, this is, usually happens when there's thunder, lightning, ice sliding off the roof. The horse starts like trying to kick the patient off, which doesn't happen that often. But in, the, in this, there's uh, someone made a survey of all the hypotherapy patients and of all the lessons conducted there were about, this was in 2010, there was 388,000 lessons or so. And in those lessons, there was 1,287 uh, emergency dismounts completed. And it gives you a rate of one in 302. And for injuries, there is, of those 388,000 lessons, there was only 36 injuries reported, which gives a rate of 1 in 10,785, which means almost never you get hurt. It's such a low probability of being injured. It's not, because insurance companies used to not cover it because they consider it dangerous or experimental which is neither of those things. It's been, hypotherapy has been around since about 1960 in Germany is when it started. And next story is of a little girl named Izzy. She's about five years old. She has, she's on the autism spectrum and has an optical issue, so she has difficulty seeing. But when she's on the horse, and well, well, for some reason, her brain thinks doing this sort of hand movement in front of her mouth is very important for some whatever reason. And when, but when you break, take the hands apart and put a layer by her side, she's able to just sort of lay there, relax. She's able to get use her hands mostly again. And she just sits there on the horse and relaxes. We've actually had her almost fall asleep while she's sitting on top of the horse. And the thing is, they don't, patients don't realize how hard they're actually working to stay upright sitting on the horse. And there's all sorts of little muscle movements, but it helps with younger patients especially, because the kids are able to look around, watch with them, play with the horse's hair. It keeps them occupied, instead of sitting on like a yoga ball for 20 minutes or so. They're, they're able to keep themselves entertained. It makes the therapist's job a lot easier. And also brings along this, little, this connection with the horse and the horse the patients often call to have their favorite horse or call their horse. And one patient, uh, Brianna, when they're going down one side of the arena in the middle, she always looks over the side and calls out one of the horse's names. And she's like, calls up his name, and then it goes paying attention to the lesson again, and it goes, I love that horse. Mm. And then it's, the patient's lives are truly changed. They leave upreach feeling a lot better than when they entered and they oftentimes go home and take a nap because 
of all the effort they've actually put in to basically training themselves and their patient lives have been improved a bit better just by kind of these one or once a week lessons. And that's the is. And are there any questions? So I've done horseback riding for several years, and I had been riding, I had to take a break because the place I went to was only outside, so every time it rained or could rain, we wasn't able to ride, so then I eventually found this place. I went here because I had weak core muscles, so I couldn't like hold myself up as well as I needed to. And I ended up here, and then I no longer need it for my core muscles, but I volunteer here every weekend for two hours. I've gotten all my community service from our breach, basically. Yes? Do they also do this for psychological reasons, not just physical? Yes, also, there's also occupational that tends to be, yes, yeah, so we have like, we have kids with autism, the mental issues, they're on the horse. We have a little boy named Nolan who has autism and He's fully capable of moving around on his own. We would sit and be like, wait till the horse is sick go and he, to make him go. He's like, sick go. And he'd tell his horse to move, and then we move along. Okay. Great job, Hunter. Thank you.